they're using stars in the universe as their protons. So they're looking, they're waiting for some random event in the sky to happen where two black holes just collide. And it's one of the most energetic processes in the entire universe. It's so chaotic. The, the explosion that went off that they detected, it, I, it's so crazy how big of an explosion was. If you were a solar system nearby, you would have been obliterated, absolutely obliterated. So they're just, we got lucky. There happened to be this huge explosion of two black holes colliding. And now they've measured other stars as well. There's neutron stars. There's how do they detect this? So the idea is and that... how far away are these black holes that are exploding into each other? Right. So they're very far away, you know, yeah, in other galaxies, so. you know, there are other solar systems, other galaxies. And basically the idea is that by the time the gravity get, the gravitational waves get to us, it's very weak. Mm. It's very faint. And that's why it's so hard to detect because they're so far away. You have it exactly right. So the basic idea is there's a trade-off, right? Do we make gravitational waves in a lab? And then it, it, gravitational waves are kind of like light. If you turn on a light bulb, the further away you get from the light source, the less light you see because right. light's going everywhere, right? right? Yes. So it doesn't make sense to put a light bulb in the other room right. and light your room. Same thing here. So you, you could say, right, it might be a smart thing to say, well, can I make it in a laboratory? and just create the gravitational waves and then detect them immediately. It actually turns out some people tried that, but there was some controversy. It wasn't clear if it was detected or not, I believe in the 1970s perhaps. Um, and so now people have realized that, well, <clears throat> if we get lucky enough for the right explosion to happen out in the universe, then we can actually detect the gravitational waves. So okay. the, the gravitational waves near the source where the collision happens, they're very chaotic, very difficult to predict. We don't, it's, it's a high energy process mm -hmm. and it's very complicated. <clears throat> and so, but by the time the gravitational waves get to us, it's so, it's so faint. Mm -hmm. It actually makes it easier to try to understand because you, you can uh, use the low energy theory because by the time the gravitational waves get to us, it's, yeah. it's not, it's not too chaotic. Right. So we have a better handle on how to detect that. It's much more established. Mm. There's a, a very solid consensus on how we should detect that. Haven't they been trying to make, or haven't they successfully made a black hole in a laboratory? Um, I heard that. that was... I, I'm not aware of that. There was speculation that maybe proton collisions could lead to the creation of a black hole, but that was a little bit of a speculative idea that gets caught in the press and gets hyped up a little bit. Can you try to find that, Stephen? Black hole made in a lab. I, I swear I saw that somewhere. I remember hearing about it, and uh, it's just saying that it, it disappears after like 0 .00 seconds. Oh, it disappears real quick. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, there could have there could have been some experiment too, but On a simula. Oh, that one. Okay, that researchers one. Researchers at the University of Amsterdam were able to create a simulated black hole in a lab in a paper published by the journal Physical Review. Uh, research. The scientists claimed that they were able to create a chain of atoms. Electrons skipped along the chain, creating a short, a sort of wave. So, if I remember correctly, that might have been this experiment where they did. They also do something in a quantum computer. Was that the same one I'm thinking of? I know there was some experiment where, yeah, it, it was. Mm, it was like an analogy. So that there's there's different analogies in these different theories. So I know there maybe this is different than the one I'm thinking of, but I know there was one experiment where they kind of simulated a black hole in a quantum computer in a way. And uh -huh. so people, I mean, people thought it was support for the idea that the mathematics of quantum gravity makes sense, but it, it's, it's a little, there's like this analogy that's happening there. So it depends on <clears throat> it, assuming that analogy is right. Um, but yeah, I'd have to look more into the details for this one. Okay. Then, oh that's yeah. In the Netherlands. Yeah. That's the one I saw. Create a, gro a lab grown black hole in the Netherlands. Okay, okay. That, maybe down. that one's a little different then. That's interesting. So zoom in on that highlighted stuff, on that highlighted part. Using, using a single f uh, file chain of atoms to simulate an event horizon. Mertens allowed electrons to skip from one position to the next. This caused certain properties of the element to vanish, creating an event horizon that changed the wave-like nature of the surrounding electrons. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it's hard to tell, right? Because they're saying it simulated an event horizon, which to me uh, means, was it a real event horizon? It's hard to tell. What does that even mean? And also there's a theory that all of the fundamental particles could be 
black holes. We don't even know. Wait, so, what? <laughs> some people have, uh, you know, some people, Frank Wilczek, have, uh, who's a Nobel laureate, have said that elementary particles such as an electron could be an extremal black hole, a black hole that's kind of at its limit. Uh. And so that's an idea that we're not sure yet. There, that has been studied in string theory a lot as well, mm. but we're still trying to figure out how to connect string theory to the real world. Um, but mm -hmm. so in some sense, it might turn out that once we have a unified field theory, the notion of creating a black hole could be a trivial thing because a black hole is just a massive particle, really. It's a point source of mass at the end of the day. It creates an event horizon. I mean, even the sun, the, if you're really far away from the sun, yeah. mathematically, this, the first approximation is just to pretend the sun is a black hole because it's, it's a point object. Right. When you're really far away and you don't care about the size of the sun, you might as well just pretend it's a black hole if you're far enough away. Okay. It's just a mathematical approximation that does the trick really well. So when you think about what are particles, right, what's the difference between the sun, when you zoom out and the sun right. just turns into a dot, Right. How is that different than an electron? We don't know yet. <laughs> We're still trying to figure out right. how an electron okay. should work in quantum gravity. And so one possible solution is to say, well, maybe electrons are actually black holes, but stable black holes. Right. So, but now every, what's more established, what's hot in the community is to say, well, we know that black holes can radiate Hawking radiation. There's, there's more and more evidence suggesting that this is possible so it suggests that black holes are in some sense when especially when they're really large mm -hmm. they're unstable they slowly radio radiate energy away and eventually become smaller so we don't understand exactly those different theories there's you know a lot of work actually exploring this and i haven't even looked into all of the literature because as i was mentioning there's so many papers but some people are saying eventually everything will just hawking radiate away and the whole black hole would disappear other people are saying, well, no, eventually it's going to reach this limit where it can't radiate anymore and it could become a stable particle. Mm. So that's, that's something that's still, I would say, up for debate. <laughs>